Hello everyone and I would like to show you one more an amazing chess game by the master attacker Alexei Shirov and this is one of his chess games when he was only 19 years old so this chess game was played in 1992 in the Reykjavik Open chess tournament uh, and his opponent Thor Halsson uh, is a Icelandic chess grandmaster and some 20 years later after this chess game he became the chess champion of Iceland so in 2012 and let's see what happened in this chess game in my humble opinion Alexei Shirov is one of the greatest attacking chess players of all times he is perhaps at top three uh, so maybe the top three should be something like Mikhail Tal, Geri Kasparov and Alexei Shirov those chess players are exceptionally amazing chess players when it comes to attack so <coughs> Let's see what happened in this chess game. Shirov starts the game with d4. We have d5, c4, and this is the queen's gambit, the client. Knight to c3, knight to f6, knight to f3. So this is the slav defense, and the game is transposing into the semi-slav defense. e3, knight from b to d7, queen to c2, bishop to d6, and Shirov played g4. Already very exciting, sacrificing the g-pawn. Uh, the soundness of this move is questionable, but Alexei Shirov wants to have an active position, a very active position indeed. After knight takes on g4, rook over, it is going to give white the open file. So black doesn't want this, castling and still pushing the pawn, full steam ahead. After defending the knight, bishop to d2, f5, ampassan, and knight captures, but Shirov, as you can see, he opened the g file queen to e8 and then castling from the queen side h6 attacking the knight and now watch this move Alexei Shirov is not retreating he played h4 sacrificing the knight we have bishop to b4 not accepting the sacrifice but if capturing the knight then capturing back after defending the knight this is the best move capturing and then landing on e4 and you can see that there is tremendous pressure on the king side both the queen and the rook is attacking the king and you can also push the pawn so you can see that defending this is not easy against Alexei Shirov so actually this is exactly what happened in the real chess game after few moves later black eventually captured the knight h takes on g5 h takes on g5 so accepting the sacrifice after knight to e4 landing on e4 we have rook to f5 by black by Thorhausen the Icelandic chess grandmaster but by blocking the queen let's play a random move just to see the attacking ideas of Alexei Shirov so if some random move then queen to h7 and almost black is getting force checkmated bishop to b4 both attacking the rook and cutting the escape square so after defending then pushing the pawn check check and checkmate and after queen to f3 check uh, sorry after queen to h4 check if king takes on g6 we have a similar continuation this is still getting checkmated there is no escape for black so after queen takes on e4 blocking the queen and then queen to h4 by alexei shiro targeting on h8 so queen to g6 check and then pushing the pawn and you can see that white has a very solid position cementing and defending the g-pawn knight to f8 so basically black wants to develop his bishop queen to h4 can you see the threat well alexei shirov is threatening to push the e-pawn and trapping the rook where is the rook going so king goes back making room for the king and for the rook and then defending the e-pawn Finally, a slow move by Alexei Shurov. And in this position, can you see the threat? What is the threat for white? Well, we have king to d8. In this position, if a6, then f5 is possible because black can take the pawn. If capturing the pawn, then capturing back with check and winning the queen. So the only safe spot for the queen after exchanging the queens pushing the pawn after being two pawns up for white white is getting back the piece and this is all over for black so white is easily winning 
excuse me so okay uh, we have rook from h to e1 king to d8 this is why king to d8 so after pushing the pawn it looks like black can take back because there is no check but Shirov is changing the plan and he played d5 and in this position he is threatening to take the pawn with check and also attacking the rook so c takes on d5 c takes bishop to d7 blocking the king but then white played a very strong move can you see the next move of Alexei Shirov? Okay, he played a 5 of course. So there are not so many options for black because if queen goes back, that's the same thing that we talked. Uh, exchanging the queens, knight takes queen and then pushing the pawn, forking rook and the knight. So e takes on a 5, would you capture the pawn? Well, Alexei Shirov has two connected passers in the center with pushing the pawn, a very strong move. Black also has a pass pawn, but Shirov's connected pawns in the center are looking so much more menacing than this f pawn. So, e6 by Alexei Shirov, forking two pieces, is this resignable for black? <coughs> uh, well, black is trying this bishop to a4 and threatening checkmate on c2, queen to c2, checkmate. So there is no time for capturing the rook because of queen to c2, but Shiro played rook to d2, both defending the rook and defending on c2. Ooh, rook to f5, defending the rook just on time, but actually defending is not so easy. We have f3, Ooh, rook to e4 by Shiro. Well, in this position, uh, the knight is not going anywhere, you can also push the pawn, there is no time for defending the bishop, e7 is also possible, so we have rook takes on g5, but Shirov simply captured the bishop, we have rook to g1, blocking, not exchanging, but Toralson played rook to g2, and what now? So if something like queen to e3, that would be a terrible move because of queen to c2 checkmate. But Alexei Shiro played queen to h4, that's check, and then simply defending with blocking the queen, and white has the superior position. We rook over, and it is white to move and win. White played a killer move, so this move is pinning the bishop, but it's a meaningless move. So if I give you a few seconds, can you guess the next move of Alexei Shirov? There is a very simple move, uh, after that move, defending is very difficult. It's not difficult actually. It is impossible. Uh, black is lost. Okay, did you see the move? Let me give you three more seconds. There is there is no need to rush. There is no need to hurry. Okay, one, two, and three. So this is the move. D6. And black played an incredible move. Black played rook to d8. Actually, this was an incredibly bad move <laughs> for a grandmaster of course maybe black was hoping to defend d7 maybe this is what he thought but actually he didn't see or maybe he just allowed his opponent to play queen to e7 maybe he didn't see that so shiro played queen to e7 check mate this is what happened on the board at grandmaster level chess so basically after d6 it looks like he can also push the pawn but most importantly he's threatening checkmate and how to defend this there is no sensible defense so this is 100% resignable but instead of resigning we have rook to d8 and getting checkmated queen to e7 lights out knockout <laughs> okay so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you next time with more instructive chess games stay safe take care and bye bye